Next up, we have um, Panagiotis Takis Metakis. I don't know how I did there with my Greek. Metaxas. Metaxas, sorry. All right. Uh, he is a professor of computer science uh, and, uh, uh, at Wellesley and a visiting scholar at the Center for Research on Computation and Society. And his area of research, while well, he gets this set up, is about misinformation, propagation, and electoral predictions. Um, so uh, I actually was reading about him, uh, and I saw that he said that he loves social media uh, in the Wellesley newsletter. He says he loves using social media, but Facebook is uninteresting chitter chatter. So yeah. only, only Twitter. <laughs> only Twitter for me, yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, right. And, and as a matter of fact, I uh, give a lot of uh, value. I, I don't want to sound like an advertisement for Twitter, but I, Twitter is playing the role of my collection of editors. Instead of going around like crazy trying to be informed about the important things, I have selected carefully the people that I want to be informed from and I follow uh, their, uh, their tweets. So if you think you have something important, tell me. You send me an email and you'll tell me. So um, I, I did something crazy, so let's see how it works. Um, given the interest of the morning discussion, I try to change my uh, talk so that it fits into the um, uh, form of where the discussion is going. Um, I was going to tell you a lot about uh, how web spammers and propagandists uh, are, um, uh, have a lot of things in common, and um, I will tell you, I would have told you a little bit about uh, how the Theory of propaganda can help you detect uh, uh, propaganda as well. But I'll skip and I will tell to you a few things about uh, the first Twitter bomb that uh, with my colleague we found a couple of years ago. Um, and and uh, there it was a case in which somebody was attacking uh, the candidate Martha Coakley in the last Massachusetts uh, elections. And um, I'm acknowledging uh, any Mustafa Rai who's sitting back there. We found out that actually it was easy to detect this kind of attack. This is where they were uh, trying to send their people, and the message was signed by uh, American Future Fund. We had no idea who was behind this attack. Turns out we're the same Iovan Republicans who were also behind the attack on Kerry. So, pretty interesting. Uh, story when we found, and as Phil said, it would be nice if we had found it a little earlier, not like, you know, um, maybe weeks later after the elections were done. But of course, if you want your attack to be effective, you better launch it just before the elections. Elections are awfully important and you cannot let them down. That led us into the current project that I'll tell you about. The other thing that we found also was another uh, prefabricated tweet factory. So if you wanted to support your cause by attacking particular reporters, you would go to this site, you would find a collection of tweets, and then all you would have to do would be to copy and paste, copy and paste, fire, and instead of trying to tell the general public about that, you were going to tell about particular <coughs> uh, news reporters and news organizations about your message, and you would write in the Massachusetts senatorial race as a way of getting the message out. So, I will close this parenthesis because um, I want to tell you a little more about what we're doing now. The discussion of this session has to do a lot with uh, trying to create tools for individuals. And, and here is something that uh, um, I know that uh, um, people from, uh, um, I'm blanking out, uh, you, Sahidi is doing, so I had a little discussion with Patrick before um, about that. Uh, what uh, do I care about? Um, have you ever heard of social theorems? I hope not. Because I just you know, thought of this term as a way of making a point. What's the point? We treat um, our knowledge, what we you know, um, try to believe as fact, we treat them as theorems. The same way that we are looking to mathematical theorems to make sense of the world around us, but the problem is they are not the same. Uh, there is a big difference between the real theorems and the mathematical the and the social theorems. You know, um, social theorems are things like, you know, there is no such thing as a free lunch, which you might consider to be true, except, you know, if you are a graduate student in a university and you will find lots of free lunch after every talk, right? Um, so, it, but in general, it is roughly the case, just not always. 
and compare it with f equals m times a, which is something that no matter what, you know, it will work as long as you are in this universe. Um, we confuse natural laws with social behavior. So we would love society to behave the same way as nature, but it doesn't. For example, nature will not care if you did another experiment before and it will not change its behavior the second time you do an experiment. Society will do that. And that's a problem when you try to find exactly the same uh, behavior time. And again, here I have the uh, you know, uh, Joe Paterno and uh, Whitney Houston, uh, uh, Houston deaths. The first one was a fumble. The second one, you know, the um, news organizations were very careful not to repeat it, so they were kind of slower as they were going. Another bad thing that my mother used to tell me all the time, it's the good guy does not always won, win, I'm sorry, but this doesn't mean that you do not have to try every time to get the good things out. Um, finally, just because you found a counterexample in a social theorem, it does not mean that the social theorem is wrong. Just because some of the things that society behaves uh, like do not always work does not mean that we know nothing about society. We still know something about society. And we saw some of these earlier, you know, for example, Brendan Nehan talked a little bit about, you know, best practices, credible sources, how to uh, make more sense uh, about all of these things. So, um, what are social theorems that I want to tell you about are things that we have discovered in the last five years, some of them, uh, and, and what we hope is to put them into a personal tool that will help you make more sense as you're receiving information. We'll, you know, we'll deliver your information with a little bit of trust uh, value and we'll tell you whether you should be trusting this piece of information as it's coming to you and why. So I'll give you three of them uh, today and I'll give you some evidence about that. So the first one is that unedited retweets about political issues indicate indeed agreement and reveal communities in likely minded people. It does not mean that every retweet means that kind of thing, but when you have political discussion, retweets, verbatim retweets actually mean that I totally agree with this guy. Always, not always, and I'll show you example, but most of the time. That's the first uh, social theorem. The second one is that, it's a very optimistic one, given enough time and enough people's attention, lies have short and questioned lives. That's pretty optimistic. It doesn't mean that every time lies will die. No, it doesn't. Um, if you look in world religions, you will see some lies that they have propagated forever. But there are other cases in which in this world we live in, actually, they can be uh, detected. And the last, which is not really a theorem, but you know, what the heck, is that um, people with open minds and critical thinking ab abilities at better, are better at figuring out truth than those without. Sounds like a da, but you know, we, uh, with the discussion we had in the morning, it seems like we tend to believe that, oh, maybe there is nothing we can do. Uh, but it is not like that. So some evidence. Uh, the first comes from the uh, data we got when we uh, gathered the Massachusetts uh, senatorial elections. This is the retweeting pattern of a group of people that retweeted uh, you know, the most. This is about a thousand um, uh, people that they retweeted about uh, 14,000 times in these seven days. You can see a way that they were div uh, divided and actually they were divided automatically by an algorithm if you retweet a lot, you get to be clustered together, otherwise you're far away. The big group, by the way, is not a unified, if you look closer at their individual retweets. There are three different groups there. Some of them engage more with the other group, the others are not engaging at all. Um, the uh, people from Indiana, Phil and uh, Mike and uh, Bruno there have found a very similar picture for the elections uh, in the late uh, um, 2010. The second about giving enough people's attention. Here is some results of a paper that checked to see how much misinformation about uh, uh, rumors about uh, potential tsunamis and earthquakes problems in Chile in 2006, I think it was, propagated and what, uh, how far they propagated. Some things, you know, the bottom part are the false rumors. They were proven false eventually. The top are the confirmed truths. These ones were con uh, questioned much more often, as you can see and did not have, uh, here is the column I want to show, and 
here is the number of different questions. It's not like the truths were not questioned, just not as much by and large. Another very interesting example are the Londo riots rumors that they propagated. The guys at uh, the Guardian have an amazing tool. You should visit and play with it. The pics there show you know some attempts at uh, you know propagating uh, false uh, uh, information. Eventually died. They tried to revive, but they did not lose uh, live for long. Uh, uh, wisdom from the ages, here is uh, time saving truth and falsehood um, and envy. So th we're going along the same ways. Um, I need to stop, I know. So a little thing about open minds. Um, the third part, the critical thinking. It's not that everybody will actually be beaten by every piece of information. How does it go? You cannot fool every, uh, all the people all the time, right? That's something that happens. You cannot expect you will have a tool that you will just click and will give you the answer. What you really want is to be able to have technology that will give you the information, but you will need to figure out the answer using your own brain. So education is darn important there. Here is Rias Ferreos I mentioned in the morning. And men notice that he said, whoever thinks freely, you want to be free in your thinking, but you want to be able to think as well. Thank you.